Hello, Hello there. there. Welcome back to In a Galaxy. We're going, this is episode five, and we're coming at you with another double episode. Of Knights of the Old Republic. Yes, we are. I'm sorry, this Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. There we go. We're looking at the sixth and the seventh half hours of KOTOR. In this hour, we um, leave Corbin and we go on to the planets of Manon and Tatooine. Nice. Before we get to Manon and Tatooine, though, we gotta cover what happens on the Sith planet. Um, last time, the Force was serving us well, and we were training in the Sith Academy. Oh, yeah. We were. That's what we were doing. Um, and this time, we are in the tomb of Naga Sadao when um, Uthura, who's the second-in-command, betrays the first-in-command, Uthar Win. Uthar and, Win. And does Uthar Win... Who, who wins again? Uthar um, wins. It's... You, you, it's, we, it's, a it's a double... Revan teams up with Uthura. But then Uthura turns on Revan after that, right? Yes. If I, yeah, yes, okay. she does. But then she he defeats her, but lets her live or yep. something? Yep. He okay. chooses the light side once again, and light side, yeah. light side goals, light side. and yeah. Um, she has some crazy forehead tattoos. Absolutely, yeah. It, it actually looks like a giant, like, kind of a yeah. stylized tarantula, and maybe. I know so. it sounds weird that we're already off Corbin, but, like, there wasn't really a lot on Corbin. The m majority of this hour took place... On the planet of Manon. Now, I'm um, actually looking this up on the good old Wikipedia. Um, I'm going to... I guess I'll read you a little bit of what it says. Manon w was an aquatic planet in the Pirshik system. It was home to an amphibious species called the Selkath. The planet was the completely covered in water and was the only known source of, medicinal, of the medicinal substance, Colto, in the entire galaxy. And we see from the start that their society is built on so-called neutrality. Now, neutrality for me, in like in the wars in Star Wars, is always a tricky thing because we see it a lot, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and it's always a plot where it seems it's a, it's kind of a convenient plot point. Like um, in the Clone Wars, there's that episode. Yeah, we were just watching the Clone Wars in old... season one. The Lurm, what are they called? The Lurmen. The Lurmen. The Lurmen. Lurmen. And they're like we're neutral. But then they decide not to be neutral, but... Yeah, but the Selkath, the Selkath man, they're not budging. I'm not. They're not budging. I mean, it's interesting from a story... I mean, from a game perspective, they're obviously just designed to be as obstinate as possible. Absolutely. Just kind of be pretty, uh... Interesting. Did you know that the Selkath were enslaved by the Galactic Empire during the Galactic Civil War? I did not know that. That's Seems like pretty much... Every species in Star Wars was imprisoned <laughs> by the at Emperor, some point or another. Oh, and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, to Zelkath and um, apparently Manon is in canon. And though. Manon is canon. Yeah, that's wow. that's that's awesome. Is it um, is it in a uh, Star Wars Resistance? Maybe. No, that's Castellan. That's Castellan. Hmm. Where is? Let's see. I'm looking right now on. How oh, it's canon. Oh, it's this? because um, they're bounty hunters in the Clone Wars who are oh. Selkath. Okay. And so basically, because the species of Selkath is canon, then mm. by proxy, the species of the the planet of Manon that they come from is mm. canon. Interesting. Okay. Um, it's always... Uh, but So the Republic and Sith both have bases on Manon. But what's interesting is the Selkath don't side with either of them. No, they try to stay neutral. Yeah, which seems odd, and they don't. They try so hard to not to pick sides. I mean, actually, they do pick a side. Yeah. They do pick a side against both of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's almost like they're a third I mean, party, but like they're a government. They're the government, so they're like, yeah, okay, we can do. I mean, from a business want. perspective, if you want to make as most <clears throat> much money as possible, if you're the only place. <laughs> In the entire galaxy. In existence of this thing that both sides really, really want. You could kind you, of just incite a bidding war. Isn't that hand, what, um, isn't that, that what is the... intensely dangerous. Isn't that what the banking clan did in the Clone Wars? I have no idea. I think, yeah, I the banking clan, what they, 
what they were intending to do is they were intending to basically hike up the conflict as much as they wanted by hiking up interest rates for both the Republic and the Separatists. But the problem is they hiked up interest rates for both for the Republic at a far steeper rate than they did the Separatists. Because Why would they do that? The Separatists? Because they were secretly allied with the Separatists. Interesting, but it seems like the Separatists would be more because well, Sand Hill, um, you know, Sand Hill and the Moons were. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were. They were all separatist sympathizers. So. All right. They tried to coming off it. of that little tangent. Yeah. Uh, get back on track here. Yeah. What do we? Well, uh, what do we hit next? Um. After what do we Roman hit next? On, oh, we got we, two trials. The first trial. Yeah, we got to talk about the Selkath for a second. The Selkath. First of all, I want to know what language they speak because man, they speak a language, all right. Selkath. Um, they speak the Selkath language. They speak the Selkath language. I believe. Selkatha. Oh my gosh, Selkatha. What a language. What Good a Lord. language. Good Lord and Potter. Yeah. This language, if Kotor, like, it, this, if, like, the Athorians and the Duras and all the regular aliens in Kotor, if they, if they talk for a long time. You have not heard anything. Selkath talk twice as long. It is well, absolutely outrageous. The it's first just... trial, the first trial took a good third of the first half hour. That yeah. was a full ten minutes for one trial. Ten and minutes. It, it didn't really. It just. Oh my gosh! The it was so was annoying. Fun. It was so god darn annoying. Um, man, it was really. Um, but what do we get? Tr- but what do we get court martialed by? Why are we doing this trial? No, isn't there a... He tries to... Or... Revan tries to sneak into the Sith base. Yes, right? he does. He tries to sneak into the Sith base because... There's been interesting stuff happening. First of all, he's trying to find the star map on Manon. <laughs> literally, this is literally the entire KOTOR game. It's like, Search okay... Line. It's like, okay, we got two objectives. There's some problem going on in the planet. Oh, and also we have to find this, the star map. Yeah, on, Korriban, on Korriban, we have to... Successfully fake out everyone into thinking we're the Sith. We're a Sith, and we're not. Yeah. Oh, and also the star map. <laughs> uh, in Manon, we have to dodge the authorities and investigate scientists disappearing. Oh, and also the star map. Mm-hmm. On Tatooine, we have to work for... The, we'll get there later, but we'll have to work for the Circa Corporation and try and gain their trust while tracking down testing readers. Oh, and also the star map. In Kashyyyk, we have to play our part in a whole Lion King-esque drama with Wookiees. Oh, and also the star map. Yeah. It's like, we gotta constantly keep searching for the star map and everything else that no. happens after is secondary. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's gonna be excused because it's a video game. Yeah, but still, Revan's not actually a heroic guy if you think about it that way. Um, I guess not, I guess not. Yeah. yeah um, Although it is not, um... I mean, I hate to say it, but the plot of the... The, the plot of this uh, story is, uh, how do I put this? It's not people-oriented. It's, it, not, it's not character-driven. It's, it's event-oriented. Yeah. Much exactly. like Row 1, um, which is, I think, why... What do we call Row 1? I call oriented. Rogue 1 event-oriented a lot, which is Can why... Can you elaborate I think, on that? I think Rogue 1, you know, you have this such stock in the Death Star... You have so much stock in the stealing of the plans, but I mean, you don't the have. Movies about the stealing of the plans. Yes. So I don't know so, what you would expect. Of course, but they they uh, focus so much on the events that they don't focus enough, nearly enough, on any of the characters doing the events, which is why I think the characters of Cassian and Baze and especially Jin are so one dimensional. That's just me, though. I thought that the, the problem was really... It, it wasn't with the... Um, I mean, the characters' motivations seemed to be... They were clear and they were laid out, but they just weren't... They, they didn't connect with the audience at all. Of course. As I was watching it. So I would say that it was more a problem of the writing rather than the uh, the plot itself. I think so, yeah. Anyway. Um, but anyway, <laughs> Moving so... Moving on. There's this... Let's see. So we go through the trial, and it's a really freaking long trial we have if, if we haven't mentioned that already it's a really freaking long trial yeah, i think we i think we have um and then there's this really weird disturbance you would call it the disturbance in the force is all the submarine episode 
the submarine. The submarine, let me tell you. So basically, there's like... Yeah, so they're like, yeah, so we have a medical facility underwater. Oh, it's a medical facility. No, it's not a medical facility. It's a research facility. It's for the Colto? It's for Colto. It's a co- Colto harvesting. Do we even know what Colto is at this point? Is it a plant? It's a plant. A vegetable, a mineral, an animal? It, it's, a, it's a plant. It's like Boda. It's like, um, what, what's, what's Bacta. Boda? It's like Bacta. Bacta, okay. Um, oh, it's a liquid. Liquid known for its human abilities was found in the water. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. All right. So Colto is a liquid that has healing properties. Yeah. Thus, very important. During and it's only on Manon. It's only on Manon. Only. Like. Only on Manon. Okay. You can't get it anywhere else in the galaxy. Exclusively at Manon. <laughs> Exclusively at Manon. Store of medicinal surprise supplies. But. So they, they, they were, they had scientists down there and so, but the scientists weren't, like, weren't heard from in a while. So they're like, okay, let's send our soldiers down there. They weren't heard of, they, they weren't heard from, um, and then they sent mercenaries down there and they weren't heard from. And they're, and then they're starting to freak out. So they send Revan down there. (laughs) Mm, Revan, of course. Because, logical thing to do. Yeah, because he's pretty much the Republic and the Jedi yeah. Order's errand boy at this point. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to... Okay, so, first of all, we see these extremely fierce um, sharks down there. I don't know, I think they're cool. They're called Phyraxin sharks. Um, I remember playing Knights of the Old Republic. It was really, um, it was frightening, honestly. The sharks were frightening. We had this sonic thing. Yeah, it was like this sonic thing that you use to, like, blast a sound to scare away the sharks. Mm, interesting, All right. It was really strange. I bet. Um, but then we get, then we hear the story of these two scientists down here. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, the scientists. This is this part's where it gets weird, like, they... Yeah, they do a lot of science fake, like, fake science stuff that Star Wars does every once in a while, but it was, like, really compressed into about five minutes of hyper science stuff. But I'm talking even before that. Revan comes down there, and then he finds these two scientists trapped behind a ratio, and the scientists are getting... They're, they're like super panicked and they get super aggro on him. They they, <laughs> they want they want to they want to kill him. They think he's going to let in a virus or something if they let him in. And then even after even after it's all over, they get super Well, they're just super irritable. Well, so because of what funny. happened to them, it's not actually that unreasonable. I don't know. I just think it's a little funny when they have lines like Well, there was some line of on the I apologize for I apologize for my. Um, I apologize for, for my hostileness. My hostility. But you However, can't attack I just saw us. my entire scientific team get their faces eaten off by their former friends. So yeah, it, it's it's. A, so it's, basically, the scientists were like, yeah. It's so it's interesting. Yeah. So the scientists were like, yeah, we were minding minding our own business, and then we just heard this scream. And the scream. Turns out that scream was the shark. What? The scream was what was what it was called the progenitor. The which, progenitor. Uh, shark. Yeah. The progenitor is basically... What I get from this is she is the... Not only where all the fraction sharks come from, but also where the cell cast come from. Um, she is the... Like, I guess you could call her, like... She's the origin of this entire planet. But their machinery was making her and the other Fractions sharks aggro, so... <laughs> aggro. Yeah. Oh, that's actually cool. We're looking at the Wikipedia page. Um, but So, it's the light side ending, so... Um, so, there are two options. You can either... 
you can either, the light side option is destroy the machinery that's making diffraction sharks aggro, or you can pump a, a, an, a beta type toxin, mm. like a beta tested toxin, into the water and killing the progenitor and polluting all of the mon- waters of Manon and destroying all the culto. Mm. But when you do that in game, the price of medical equipment rises. Mm. That's pretty cool, honestly. Um, I like that literally in-game effects are literally toggled by what the player makes, the decisions they make. It's also just really interesting. Manon has a weird, like, the Cellcasts have a weird sense of justice. They're like, yeah, if we saw you do it, we saw you do it, but we'll we'll let you explain the entire story still. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, it's a it's a video game. I, I wouldn't expect it to go down the same way if there's a book or a movie, for example. But. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. But, yeah, Manon is a really interesting planet because it really tests, like, I feel like all the planets in KOTOR are supposed to, like, test something. Hmm. What? Well, interesting. Okay. So, so like, like, Corbin's, your, you know, your test of your ethical, like, your ethical scale. Okay. But this is your, um, this is like a sense of your judicial scale. Like, this is like, what are you willing to do in terms of legal aspects, not necessarily ethical aspects? Um, Corbin's very, you know, light side, dark side. You choose one or you choose the other. But there's chances to turn back. But, um, but the, Manon is very light side, dark side in terms of the law, and and I think actually this is an interesting connection I was thinking about. Yes. I just thought of. What if we explored that in the High Republic? That would be really interesting. What if the Jedi had some. L- Something they wanted to do that they thought was 100% right, but the Senate disagreed and the Supreme Chancellor disagreed. Yeah, that's very interesting because they and swore how do you, fealty yeah. to the Chancellor. And how do Republic. you deal with the Force in relation to the law? Mm-hmm. How much power should the Jedi have in regards to the law? I mean, like, we see the Sith government, where basically it's a government ruled by the Sith, Mm -hmm. and they can do whatever they want, because they create the law. But that's not the point of the Jedi. The Jedi is not to control. The Jedi is to serve. Yeah. Right. It's an interesting dilemma, and I'm not sure if it... It probably... Such a complicated thing probably won't happen in the higher public, but I'd be pleasantly surprised if it did. I feel like it would. I feel like there's... I've known the old Republic, especially the books in the Republic, kind of touch on some... Yeah. I guess more kind of complicated you know, themes and focuses. You know who I think would be a good person to take this on? Hmm. Charles Soule. Man, he's done a really good job with the Vader comic. Um, it's really fresh and interesting, but it's a lot about the Force. But, like, he's a really good storyteller, and he's doing his first novel for the first time. Hmm. He's been completely in comics, but he's doing a novel called Light of the Jedi. Hmm. And I'm interested to see, because there's this thing called the Great Disaster. Some crazy disaster happens, and the Jedi have to be the ones to respond. Is this uh, during the uh, the High Republic yes, and Project this the, Luminous? This is the first novel of plot Project Luminous. And it, that's Charles, what's his name? Charles Soul. Okay, cool. Um, it releases August 25th. So. August 25th. So All we'll right. have to wait until then to see. Meanwhile, though... Um, yeah. Um, meanwhile, though... Kalonord failed, of course, last Oof. time. And we get to cut back to more Darth Malik. Yes, Yay. and he sends his apprentice, Darth Bandon. Actually, this entire sequence reminds me of the Phantom Menace. Yeah. This is my apprentice, Darth Maul. He will find your lost ship. Of course, Darth. Of course, of course, the apprentice is gonna fail. What do you expect? Yeah, you're just gonna abandon what do you him. Expect man. You're just gonna abandon him. Nice. Ba-boom. 
Um, but anyway, so we touched down on good old Tatooine. Guess who's back? Back again. I don't know who's back. Tatooine's back. Tell a friend. Um, on Tatooine, um, we are greeted by the Zerka Corporation. Now, Jacob, you were talking to me earlier um, about the Zerka Corporation, right? You were mm -hmm. thinking of, you were, um, you were talking about interesting. So, the Zerka Corporation is actually an arms like factory it is but i think it's also yeah i think it comes to be a lot more than that zirka zirka also known as zirka weapons formerly known as zirka mining and industrial so i think yeah. that describes it pretty well you know? yeah it, it's a it's it's a corporation it's one of the corrupt corporations and it controls interests on Cor corbin kashik and tatooine and telos convenient because those four planets are all in one of the kotor games kashik Korriban and Tatooine are all in KOTOR 1, and Telos is one of the mm. planets in KOTOR 2. Um, so, um, it's interesting. They are... They're about, like, they're very, like, they're very one of those, like, corporations that's plagued by um, corruption, and we see that a lot. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, interesting. This company was confirmed to be canon by Ultimate Star Wars. Yeah. The original. That's interesting. And you heard of it, um, from Master and Apprentice? Yeah, and I, de I think it was definitely, or at least, it, w it was canon before them. Yeah, but what was it doing with Master and Apprentice? Because I haven't read Master and Apprentice. So. In Master and Apprentice, it had become this massive paramilitary corporation that controlled that right. and had massive vested interests oh, massive thank you Oof. massive vested interests in I can't remember what this this important planet on which it took place and it also held slaves somehow so yeah that's really interesting honestly it was um, a, painted as it was it was like supposed to be very evil well, it's in Kotor two, slaves, but like, we're arguably. we're trying to find the star map, and that's how the outer reaches. So we got to get a hundred license from them, and we do. But we get yeah, we get a new toy to play around with. Who is that? HK forty seven. Oh yeah, affirmative master. <laughs> um, HK forty seven is a so savage. Strange, I just can't get over it. I just can't get a over how weirdly he talks. HK forty seven is savage. First of all. Uh, he is known for calling um, human life forms meatbags, which is amazing. He's such an iconic character that they can't actually bring him back in canon, but they've done like really close. There's this guy named Mr. Bones in the Aftermath trilogy who is supposed to be modeled after mm. HK-47. Or, tri or Triple Zero in the Dark Triple Zero, Zero Netflix, also meant to be modeled after HK-47. Although Triple Zero did start... Honestly, this... Honestly, very much... This in, guy... In the same vein. This guy, I mm -hmm. think, may be the most influential and famous Kotor character out of all of them. Yeah, probably. Even more than Revan. Wait, more than Revan, wow. Even more than Revan. Uh, here, can here, you explain your reasoning? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm still an active player in the game Star Wars Galaxy of Rose, and you used to be a very active player. Yes. Who is the first KOTOR character to be added to? HK-47, that is true. And other KOTOR characters didn't arrive for two more years. I, that seems like a that seems like a bit of a stretch, though, given that the that like the Star Wars Galaxy Heroes didn't have he didn't have like Luke Skywalker, didn't have a bunch of characters. True, but it had HK-47 so. from the start, which proves. Right there, his influence. Right there is influence. I don't know about that, man. Honestly, I don't know. That's just me. Like, um, we I also. Feel, I feel like people know a lot about reference. So. Yeah, I will also I say. Beth, I've, 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 diehard fans probably know who both of them are. Yeah. To be honest. Um, Revan though. Revan's um getting some interesting uses of the Jedi mind trick out here. Oh yeah. Have you noticed that? He's, He's mind a toy. He yeah he like lowers or it. Or according to Juhani. He's using it as a toy. 
<laughs> but then again, Juhani went to the dark side. So we can't trust her. Um, so, so what did he? What did you say? He lowered the wages on HK forty seven by about what forty percent? Something like that. It went from. Don't check the math because I probably got it wrong. But four thousand credits to two thousand five hundred credits. That's that's by about fifteen hundred credits. That's fifteen over forty, is. About, yeah, about 40,000, 38%, yeah, four, wow. so about 40% mm. he lowered the wages by using a simple Jedi mind trick. That seems, that seems, seems kind fishy. Of, that seems kind of manipulative, like, he I'd, also be, convi- I'd be pretty mad if that happened. He also convinces some Gamorreans to leave him alone, which seems well, less... The Gamorreans were being total thugs, though, they cornered them <laughs> out in the middle of a random <laughs> desert, there was like a car crash, and then all of a sudden they showed up, it was kind of sketchy. Ship crash. Um, it was sketchy, though. It was very sketchy, um... But hopefully we're going to continue our efforts on Tatooine in the next episode. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that's going to be it for this episode, though. Make sure to keep following us on Anchor and Spotify and hopefully Apple if it decides to work soon. Um, open for and Breaker. Don't forget about Breaker. Oh, yes. Yeah, super forget Breaker. Ooh, <laughs> Don't awesome. forget Breaker. Forget. Google Podcasts, Radio Public. Um, okay. No, seriously, though. Okay. Um if you're watching us on any of those platforms, please, please don't hate us. Um, we just didn't know those existed. Um, uh, and I guess we'll see you next time. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you. Thanks Always. for tuning in.